welcome, welcome, welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. Happy December 26th. We made it. Uh, I hope you had a great holiday yesterday. I know I did. I hope it was filled with family and friends and good times and all of that stuff. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm truly blessed. And this time of year, there is so much to be thankful for. Uh, and I am thankful for you all. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in, depending whether you are at work or you're still at home. I think this time of year, we always reflect Right, because we look back at the year that we've had and what we've accomplished, or what we uh, thought we would like to accomplish, and then we begin to look toward next year and think about, you know, what are the things that we want to do? What are the things we want to figure out to change? What do we? How do we want to grow? All that stuff, you know, that we do. And I really believe that. This is the moment to actually begin to put all of that down and formulate, you know, where to begin for, you know, our voiceover journey in 2020. And the thing is, is so many of us, we're all in different places in our our journey, right? I mean, some of us are just starting out brand new. I have a Facebook group. Thank you for those of you who are in Facebook for joining us on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram as well. But, you know, the thing is, is that in the Facebook group, I uh, have a series of questions that people who are joining the group have to answer. And, you know, the question I get by far the most is where do I begin? And I really do think that, you know, that is a testament to a couple of things. One, it's a testament to new people, lots of new people coming into the business. But I also think it's a testament to the fact that, you know, voiceover is such a niche type business that it is, there's not, you know, like um, there's not a franchise model out there. Right. There's not a way of doing business that everyone kind of follows. There's so many different paths to success, uh, you know, and of course, success for you might be different than success for me. So I wanted to kind of just do a video today about, you know, where to start in voiceover for 2020. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of go about this in a way where hopefully we can break it down simply to where my thoughts always revolve around growing a business. So if you are in voiceover right now or you're trying to, you know, get into voiceover or you just started and you're looking to begin or you've been doing it for years, the idea here is is that we are growing a business, okay? We are growing a business. And to me, there are three parts to a voiceover business that you need to be aware of, that you need to nurture, that you need to grow, you need to learn how to do effectively, efficiently, uh, in order to be successful, all right? The first part of your business that you have to understand is the financial part of your business, the second part is the production part of your business. And the third part is your marketing part of your business. All right. And by the way, these are things that I've just lumped into three categories that I look at for my own business as over the years I've tried to, you know, make my business as easy to understand as possible while at the same time ramping up production and so forth. So let's first start into the production part. What does that mean? So every business, uh, voiceover business, needs to be able to produce high quality voice work or music or um, sometimes both, right? Uh, we need to be able to edit and master and format files. We need to be able to deliver them quickly and efficiently. And we need to be able to uh, manage the storage of all of these things and also have the equipment to do so. We also need to have the knowledge and what softwares to use, how to find the music, where, uh, you know, what to do with our space, how to do all of these things. We need to be able to produce the very best that we can. 
That is essential to your business, and you have to do that before you can actually get work. Now, there are variants on what is acceptable as you know, excellent quality and what is acceptable as just okay quality of work, and that is part of your learning curve. No matter what stage of the business you're in, whether you're in my stage or you're in your stage or whether you've been doing it for 30 years or whether you've been doing it for 30 days or a day, it doesn't matter. It, there is variance, meaning that there are certain things that you can do in voiceover that take a little bit less or take a lot less of equipment or so forth than other places. So it's important for you to learn, like audiobooks. Okay, you can do audiobook work with a little bit less quality, you know, than most, um, you know, people expect for commercial work, for example. All right, but we don't want to get in the habit of doing less quality anywhere, but I'm just pointing that out as I've experienced in my career. All right, so we've got the production aspect of it. We also have now the other, uh, another aspect is the marketing aspect, right? We have to be able to get business, you have to be able to sell. And we, a lot of people don't like that word sell, sell, right? We don't want to be a salesman, but we are. I mean, we are selling our business. And see, this is the thing I think that a lot of people get sidetracked on because one of the great things today that we have access to that a lot of voice actors in the past, and, and honestly, a lot of freelancers never had, were, were these websites like Fiverr, like Voquent, like Upwork, like Freelancer, all these different places, you know, and the pay to play sites online, all of these online agents, like I like to call them. We have access to these. And because these online agents, do a lot of their work like they have their own business and we just get business from them. It's very easy for us to not think that we need to focus on our business because we can just kind of use their name, right? And then suck that business from them because that's they're in the business of finding us work. But you have to remember that that is a part of your business's marketing plan, Okay, that you're not a freelancer, you are a business owner, and your business uses services like Fiverr or Upwork, et cetera, et cetera, in order as one piece of your way of generating business. Okay, but it's important to understand that there's other ways and to market, and that everything in your marketing boils down to what is it, one, that your customer gets when they come to you. Meaning that when you have a customer look at you, what's the experience they get? How do they find you? When they find you, what do you, you know, what, what do you tell them they need to do? And I don't mean like they call you on the phone and then you tell them. I mean like they see a post from you or somehow they get to your website. When they get to your website, what does your website tell them to do? Do they know how to work with you? Does your website answer questions for them? All of these things in marketing is like a funnel. Right. And we all have heard of marketing funnels, et cetera. But it's important to know how your customer works through your funnel. And it's important to know what marketing strategies you have. You have to figure that out. That is something for you to figure out. And everybody's different. Everybody has different ways of doing things. But one great thing to note is that even though voiceover, there is not um, there's more content being created, like people like me and and different other coaches and and you know content creators out there but there's still not like i said a franchise or you know something where there's like an operating manual that is like the rules for voiceover there is none of that but what there is is there are there are so many documents and there are so many courses and classes and and um, degrees about how to run a business and how to run, you know, and, and that's why it says business and not a specific business. Yes, where your genius comes in as a business owner is how to take those lessons, like lessons on how to market a product, okay? Just happens that a voiceover, our file is the product, right? An MP3 or a WAV file, that's our product, or our business as a whole is a product. 
how to market that. It's our genius that we take that knowledge and then turn it to how do we market a voiceover business as opposed to ed- any general business. Because a voiceover business, just like any other business, is a business. And there are there are certain things that you can do, and you can learn those things as a business. I see so many voiceover artists trying to learn all they can about um, you know, how to be a better voiceover actor or how to, you know, you know, deal with customers in the voiceover business as opposed to learning or spending just as much time learning on how to grow a business. So think about that. And when it comes to marketing, there are so many ways to market and there's so much information out there for you to learn how to market. But I always like to think of just three things uh, real quickly that that we do. Sites these days are by far the easiest way for someone brand new or just starting out or someone looking to ramp up business that's not done it before to start getting it. And the reason why is because if you haven't noticed, the Internet is where everything takes place. And the people who control the traffic or the eyeballs are the people who control the world. So sites like Fiverr who are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising and marketing and getting people to their site and things like that, that's very powerful for us because we can't spend that money. I mean, I don't know how much money you have, but I don't have that much money. So spending that money is not an option. So using those people's, you know, other people's money, other people's time, OPM, OOPT, you know, that is something that we as business owners, especially as one person or solopreneurs, whatever you want to call us, all right, or business owners with a small business, have to use what we can to get ahead. So that is one way that you can get ahead, I believe, is by using other people's money and other people's time, okay, like I said, Fiverr and other freelance sites. So just starting out or you're trying to get more business, you need to really dive into those places. All right, another place to dive into, and I fully recommend, is you've got to get on social media. I mean, if you're not on social media and it's like 2020, I mean, you you are you you got to get on it now, and you've got to start creating a name for yourself for your business. Here's a way to I think limit fear. We are very afraid, I think, of things when it has to do with us putting ourselves out there, right? Okay? We, we get afraid of that. However, if you separate that business entity from uh, yourself and you make it about the business, the product, your, your business as a whole, as opposed to, you know, just Anthony, it changes. It, it's like a little change in your mind, and it helps the fear. In my my opinion, it helps my fear go away. So when I'm looking at my business, I think, okay, how does Anthony Pika Productions LLC, or you know, a VO's Journey, as you know, as as what I've branded now my business as, right? That begins to then make me step back. Meaning like, you know, the business itself is its own entity. So I am just navigating what this business, and I did another video before Christmas um, a couple days ago talking about how, you know, if you were to take a step back and look at your business as a whole, right? Um, That is exactly what you need to do in order to limit or mitigate that fear, that fear that comes into getting yourself on social media. Right. And then if you look at it from the point of view of, okay, well, how could I make people look at my business? Do you know what I mean? What do I want my business to stand for? Maybe I want my business to stand for quality. Maybe I want my business to stand for customer service. You know, maybe I really like it when people treat me nicely when I go buy something. And I really can't stand when people treat me like crap when I go buy something. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, or I really like it when I get extra features, you know, I really like it when I buy something and then there's, uh, you know, I get, you know, like a bonus or I like it when I get a message from a retailer. It makes me feel special. Like there, you, you got to think it has it. We've got to separate ourselves and make the business unique. And this is all a part of your marketing plan. Okay, and that's why it is a good idea to focus on marketing from a business and not just a voiceover business. Okay. All right. And then the last thing I want to talk about, I mean, we can talk about 
we can talk about these all day long and all week long and all month long. But the last thing I want to talk about is finances. And I think this is one of those things that people are like, well, everything is solved with more money. Like all my all my issues, all my problems are solved with more money. I'll listen to Anthony and learn about finances when I start making some money. <laughs> well, you know, I like to think of it as the chicken and the egg, right? Which one comes first? In this case, I really believe that you need to learn about a couple of key things to run your voiceover business, especially for 2020. And that is you need to first learn about financial statements, what they mean, what they mean to a business, and what they mean as the lifeblood of your business. So, for example, you need to know what an income statement is. Now, fortunately, like I said, there is there. I mean, there's millions of tutorials on YouTube. They're very simple. There's even if you have a Word or you have Pages, depending on whether you have you know a PC or an Apple. You know, what I mean, they even have templates that you you know you can use in those places for income statements. Okay, but you need to know what an income statement is. All right, an income statement is money coming in, expenses going out. They're also called like an income and expense sheet. OK, but it shows you what comes in, what goes out and then what you have left in a way of speaking. OK, but that's what an income statement is. OK, now you need to also have the ability to make and know what a balance sheet is. OK, a balance sheet is just that it tries to balance the 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 numbers of your business. So you take your assets, all right, minus your liabilities all right, plus the equity, okay, and equity is basically what's left over, that's your equity, and it's supposed to balance to zero. If there is a discrepancy there, meaning that you have a set amount of equity, but there is more, you know, there's there's more money than what is owed coming in, you know, that's how you can tell something's wrong. But generally, this is a great way, and I think for our sakes, a balance sheet for a voiceover business is one of the most important documents you can have. And this is why. Because when you do a balance sheet, it really shows you what we actually have as a business. Now, remember, a business is worth, okay, can be something that is in actual um, tangible assets, meaning like this microphone, my computer, my whisper room, my speakers, like all those, those are assets, right? Those are worth money. Like if I was to sell them tomorrow, people would pay me money for them. Okay. But then there's also the intangible assets. All right. There's also like, uh, you know, what is the, you know, what is the system you've created worth? Do you have any products? like online products that you you sell. Like maybe you also sell, uh, like maybe once in a, a blue moon, you like, to, you like to create jingles or drops or you like to create sound effects and stuff. And you have like a little, you know, package of like 10 sound effects that you made that you sell, you know, for five bucks if people want to buy them. You can just send them an MP3 file of these, these things, right? These little things that you created. Those are become tangible assets as well, even though they're online. But once you make this balance sheet, you begin to see what is it actually that your business is worth? Because if you left tomorrow, would your business fall apart? Or would it keep running? Would someone be able to take over your business without you and continue to make money? Most of businesses like ours as a service business, that doesn't happen, right? You can't just leave and make money. Okay, because we are the business, right? We physically do the work. But when you start making these balance sheets and, and these income statements and you, you start looking at your business from a business perspective, you begin to look at it and say, okay, well, what, what is this business actually doing to grow its bottom line, right? What can I do if, heaven forbid, I can't work for a couple of weeks, OK, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's really important to look at. So where I'm going with this is, is understanding what your financial statements are and what they mean. Because if you started a financial, if you started a balance sheet now and you put down, let's say you have let's say you have a thousand dollars, just using a number. Let's say you have a thousand dollars in assets, meaning like your mic, you take everything that you bought, you add that up. All right. It's worth a thousand dollars. OK. All right. 
then you take your liabilities. And let's say your liabilities are, you know, $800, okay? So then that leaves you with about $200 of equity in the business, all right? So that equals out to be zero. But if we look at that sheet and we read further into the numbers, you have $1,000 of assets. So that means if somebody was going to buy the business, they would then probably look at uh, one thing. They would start to look at and say, okay, well, if I bought the business today, what does this business actually create? All right, and we say, well, we do voiceover work, but I'm not a part of this. I'm just gonna sell you the business or something like that, right? Well, no one would buy it because there is no system without you. And unless somebody finds someone who can do that work, which, you know, they might not even be able to do that, the business becomes almost worth nothing. So is it really a business or is it a job? Are you creating a business or a job? That's something to think about for 2020, right? What are you creating? What do you want to create? If you want to create a business, which by the way, by the way, we all recognize that creating a business besides winning the lottery or maybe marrying someone who is really rich is pro- is the fastest way to build wealth is 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 building a business creating a business right to great wealth but you've got to create an actual business and a business i like to think i want to create a business that would run if i wasn't there if i had to go away if i had to stop doing it I want to have a business that will keep working without me. Now, this is very weird, right, in the voiceover world because, well, that doesn't make sense, Anthony, because we have to do voiceover work. Exactly. But I have to tell you this, and I mean it with all sincerity. I feel like I'm pretty good, but I imagine you are just as good as I am in your own way, and I'm just as good as you in my own way. Or there are thousands and millions of millions, maybe hundreds of thousands of voice actors, hundreds of thousands of voice actors out there who are really good. All right. So it is possible for us to work together in some fashion. It is possible for you to hire people to do X, Y, Z. Remember, you are a business. This is not a hobby. It's not a job. As a business owner, that is your job is to figure out ways to grow your business and the bottom line and to make it more efficient, to make it better for the customers, the product itself, right? Of course, a lot of this also comes down to what you actually want to do. You might be a person who just wants to sit or stand or whatever and just do voiceovers. That's it. That's all you want to do forever and and a day, and that's fine. But whatever your decision is, you still need to understand the financial aspect of this and to be able to do your balance sheet, your income statement, especially, let's just be honest, with taxes. You have to know how to do these things. Sure, I mean, I guess you could have a tax advisor or an accountant, but then what do you know? They could be stealing from you. Did you know that the majority of businesses uh, get stolen from by accountants? It's a ridiculous number, too. You know what I mean? Or they work with accountants they know and those accountants steal from them because they know so little about their business or they know so little about the financial aspect. You've got to know these things, especially if you want to grow. And I can promise you this. Don't make the mistake of thinking that these things don't matter to grow your business because you might be like, but yeah, but this piece of paper over here doesn't mean anything to me growing my business over here. This doesn't help me get work. And I really beg to differ. I think every th- I think these things over here is what drives you to make the decisions that get work over here. But if you don't have these things over here, what's driving your decisions? Is it the wind blowing? Is it, you know, a video you saw? Is it what, you know, somebody on a Facebook group said was working for them? You know, what's driving your decisions? There needs to be something that drives your decisions. Now, That doesn't mean that you're not looking for ways like you determine, okay, I want to grow my bottom line by this amount and I need to generate this amount of income in order to get there, all right? And right now my services I'm currently offering are bringing in X 
and now I need to generate another amount. So I've got to find a new way to generate income that is based on my voiceover business and what I do. So then you could start looking around and yes, trying out new things and learning from other people. But that is because it is based upon core financial principles, fi- you know, business that you are trying to generate from the documents and what's driving you. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense to you. And if you're one of those people like, oh, my God, I don't want to learn that, you're not alone. There's tons of people out there like that. But the difference with successful businesses and businesses that are mediocre are the business owners who take the time to make sure they learn this stuff. I just wanted to come and talk to you guys and tell you about that today for 2020. It is so important that you learn how to run a business. Now, some people might have thought, you know, because I, I says, you know, where to start in voiceover for 2020. Where you need to start is how to run a business successfully. Um, there is a couple of books. I don't usually recommend books uh, for no particular reason, but I read a lot. And um, I've got a couple books that I have begun that I've I read a long time ago and they've just stuck with me and I read them. I've read them a couple times. And I want to recommend them to you as reading maybe over your break if you have one or not, you know, whenever you can. It, you know, on Amazon, you can also get an audiobook form, um, which, by the way, a little tip. If you want to be an audiobook listen, uh, narrator, listen to audiobooks. Don't be like, well, I do audiobooks, but I don't listen to any. Don't listen to audiobooks. Um, so that's one, E-Myth Revisited. Another book is called Built to Sell. And these are books that talk about taking your business and turning it into a system, creating a business as if you were going to sell. So I, w- I want to leave you with this. And then if you have any questions, I would love for you to post them or whatever. And my questions are this. If tomorrow someone came to you and said, I want to buy your business from you, all right, and I'll give you I'll give you $5 million for your business. All you need to do is give me your operating manual. And if I get that operating manual, you just need to be able to guarantee that I will succeed by using the manual that you've created. My question is, would you be able to do that? And if the answer is no, you've got some work to do. Because to me, and and this is just my opinion, to me, that is the epitome of a successful business. Can you leave your business and it continue to generate money for you? All right. Okay. Well, questions. If you have any, I'd love to take them. Let's see what we got. We've got... On Instagram, we got my booth director. What's up? We got William. Hey, man. We got voiceover Missy. Good to have you. Or voice Missy. Good to have you. We've got, uh, that was on Instagram. We got John on Facebook. Joe on uh, YouTube. We got Angela. What's up, Angela? On YouTube. Uh, Wait, we got voiceover Angela on YouTube and Angela on Facebook. I don't know if that's the same Angela. (laughs) I know there's a couple different ones. We got Too Rich to Miss on YouTube. What's up? Uh, John on Facebook, fear, forget everything and run or face everything and rise. Ooh, I like that. Nice acronym there. Uh, YouTube, uh, Zach Purcell, working on the statements for my other business for years. First time doing it for VO. Exciting but sad to see negative for the first time in decades. Almost all businesses start out that way, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely, they do. They do. That's why they say traditionally – There's things that talk about, you know, you shouldn't take anything from your business for the first three to five years. Here's an interesting thing, and I'm guilty of this too. Depending on how long you've been in business, most businesses, right, or the ones that are successful, they say you should take every penny that is earned in your business and put it back into your business, right, for the first three to five years of your business, okay? Have you done that, or do you take the money as soon as you make it? It's really interesting. OK, and it is it is it's just funny to think I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but it's just funny to think. Imagine if you've been in business for two years and you've made, you know, six figures. Did you take that money and use it or did you take that money and reinvest it in your business? Imagine if you reinvested that in your business, 
where your business would be. Hmm? Okay. Uh, let's see. John says, an understanding of finance is essential for any business. Absolutely. Too rich to miss. What CPA firm do you use? I actually do my stuff myself. I taught myself a long time ago, and I do my stuff myself. As my business grows, I will look into getting uh, a CPA, um, and you know, I do have a friend who, um, from a long time ago, who actually taught his children, who does uh, CPA work, uh, and he has helped a little bit. But I, I try to do everything myself. That is just a personal decision that I've made at this point in my business. Uh, but moving forward, that is something that, again, it's important to look at. Would I, you know, like, again, I would need someone to do that as I build out my business and the systems when it comes time for me and it starts taking away from my ability to make this business successful, I'll need to work with a company or, you know, a CPA, depending on, you know, what, what it is, you know, uh, someone who can help with the taxes and who can do all of that stuff. So that's a good question. Um, <laughs> too rich, too much. Uh, Joe, no questions today. Just want to express excitement for this new year. Thanks for all your vids and thank you. No problem. Angela Clark. I've been a, I've been a brick and mortar business owner successfully for the last 10 years. And everything you say is so true. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, that's awesome. Congrats on your success. I'm interested. Are you, um, if you've been a brick and mortar business, I, I would love to, I, I love business. That's another thing. I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm crazy like that, but I just, I love business. So I'm very creative where I, I, you know, the creativity I've been in theater and acting and stuff my whole life, but I also have this, you know, this, I don't know, this thing about business. So it's very exciting. So, you know, I suggest that, um, you know, you try to dive into that for the new year. But I'd love to hear more about that, Angela. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time today. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow. Oh, one more thing, too. Uh, we have the Fiverr Elite Group. Uh, it is a group that I created. I meet with every weekend. And we go over how to grow your voiceover business on Fiverr. If you don't know, I generate the majority of my income from Fiverr. And it is very exciting. I love that platform. It's growing. It is the platform, in my opinion, of all platforms. And we have about 40 people in the group. If you're interested in joining, I'll put a link below uh, at YouTube or whatever. But you can also go to www.avosjourney.com. And it's one of the first things on the page that you see. You can check that out. But I'd love to have you guys in that group as well. But other than that, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Okay. And we have New Year's coming up. So I will talk to you soon. But hopefully I will see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Have a good one. Goodbye. Goodbye.